Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. What you're about to experience is a free, worldwide, interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to episode number 189 of Category 5 Technology TV. Robbie Ferguson. And Crystal. And over there in the newsroom, hey, Hale. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the show. Um, I got lots coming up in the newsroom. Do you want to hear about it? Yes, we do. Yes, yes you do? Okay. Well, coming up in the newsroom. The internet, television, and phone services have been down in parts of Manitoba, Canada since Sunday. An Android feature has landed Google in yet another big lawsuit. Sony's PlayStation Network is coming back online, region by region, slowly but surely. And the last man to step foot on the moon wants to go back, but this time he wants to set up camp and mine a rare isotope for nuclear fusion on Earth. Stick around for these stories are coming up in under three minutes. Hillary, thanks so much. We're looking forward to that. Uh, we're going to be uh, hearing again from Hillary in about a uh, half hour. Uh, tonight, we are going to be continuing web design number nine. Holy smoke. Hokey doodle. <laughs> Just rocking it. And tonight, we are going to be, uh, I hope to actually get to the point where we're working the body of the uh, site itself, like where we're actually going to be placing the text. Mm -hmm. Get all coming a together a little bit. We've still got a little bit of a menu system to put together. We're going to fix up the Z index of, uh, of the one element that's falling behind the, uh, the Polaroid. Right. Stick around. It's more exciting than it sounds. I promise. <laughs> What's this about a Z index? <laughs> that's it. I'm going to go over to Perillo. Oh, leaving. Yeah. Naps. Everyone's taking naps. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What else have we got going on? Uh, we've got uh, lots of viewer points to give away tonight. We've got some exciting stuff. People in the chat room who are joining us. Uh, make sure you get into the chat room as well. Category5.tv. I uh, personally want to just give a quick shout out and thanks to uh, viewers who have uh, pitched in this week with our, our financial needs, uh, especially with regards to, uh, to the server replacement that we're working towards. Uh, it is a, a rather large expense that, uh, that we don't have the, uh, I guess the, uh, what do you call that, the, the capital to, yeah. to absorb. And so uh, it really means a lot to have viewers standing by us and, and uh, pitching in and, and donating to, uh, to help us with that. And, and I tell you, every little bit helps, uh, honestly, because mm -hmm. even a small donation is, is really making a big difference. Um, that said, if you're, if you're able to do more, then, then uh, that, uh, that helps us to get there faster so that we can get through some of the problems that we've had uh, over the past little while. And... Um, Speaking of uh, being able to contribute to Category 5, Flatter is a service that, uh, that as I understand it, is, is quite big in Germany. And what they do, it's a, it's a neat service where, uh, and those who use it are obviously familiar with it, but it's a way that you can flatter sites and services and, and blogs and people that, uh, that are providing services and shows like Category 5 uh, by contributing just a small amount by clicking on Flatter. It's a different kind of mechanism for donating. So cool. somebody might have, you know, five dollars sitting in their Flatter account, uh, and if they flatter five people, each of those five people get one dollar, hmm. kind of, uh, to cool. put it into real easy speak. Check it out. But <laughs> so the the thing is, is that uh, they've changed their policies over the past. Uh, well, it was Sunday that they changed things up, and very excited about that uh, because it allows us to offer Flatter on our website. Uh, category5.tv, you'll see if you go support us uh, and donate uh, that there's a Flatter Us button. As well as that, uh, on the newsroom site, newsroom.category5.tv, there is a Flatter button for every single news article. And it's just a neat little way that you can, uh, that you can pitch in uh, and Flatter Us uh, <laughs> and say thanks for some of the content that we're providing. Very cool stuff. I really like the service. It's cool. Uh, let's see. Pyros Rock is asking... Hey, do you guys still have the audio feed? And unfortunately, and that kind of uh, goes into the same sort of stuff that we're saying, unfortunately, because of the server issues that we had uh, after a power surge, we've had to strip down on a lot of the services. And the MP3 feed, unfortunately, is one of the services that we had to simply put on hold 
Um, so it's not currently available. I apologize for that, Pyrus Rock. Uh, looks like they're on their mobile device and hoping to listen to the show tonight. And, and uh, regrettably, that's not currently available, but I do hope that uh, we'll be able to bring that back very soon. And, that, uh, and, and the support of our community is, is, is a huge help in, in pushing that forward. And of course, I'm doing everything I can to uh, appealing to advertisers and things like that. Click on banners for us and, and anything else that you can do on the site. You see some banners and some advertisements. Uh, it does help if you, if you click those. It's, it's every little bit. It's like a, a drop in the bucket. But every time you click on a banner, if we get uh, you know, even a penny, it eventually yeah, adds, it up, adds right? up. Yeah, Absolutely. because you get so many people clicking on it. So, cool. Unfortunately, Agamotto, um, we're not in a position to go through like insurance or anything like that. We've been through that before, where our deductible is so high for things that it's it's not it's it's not, it's, worth, it. it's not worth it when the insurance is just going to go up. And then you look at. But one of the things that I've been looking at, we buy. Uh, our UPSs, our uninterruptible power supplies, we, we have traditionally gone with commercial grade uh, UPSs and these are the higher end, they're supposed to be, <laughs> the higher end devices that are not supposed to let the surges through and this and that. But as you'll remember, the higher end you get, the, uh, you start to lose that uh, warranty coverage. And I was talking to somebody and it, and it just, you know, something I, I might start looking at is should we actually downgrade our UPSs and get into something where if something like this were ever to happen again, hey, this UPS may have been a cheaper device, it may be more prone to issues, but it carries a $65,000 guarantee. That's something that we're considering at this point, but not something that we can jump into right now. Indeed. Okay. Uh, a way that we can sort of say thanks to you is through viewer points. Uh, we've got a lot of viewers who are working their way up to the 1,000 point mark, and that's very exciting because that's when uh, you're going to start to be able to uh, see some awards being dished out on our website. Uh, we've got uh, Tordo from Germany who uh, sent me another email this week and, and said, here I am with my cardigan, <laughs> cat5.tv slash Tuesday, if you're wondering what the deal is with the cardigan. And he says, I swear it's a different cardigan. I don't know. What do you, what do you hmm. think? I'm not sure. It has the zip-up feature, same color. Let's, let's go back to last week. <laughs> okay. Here's this week. Tordo. Here's last week. Oh, they look very similar. The, uh, these are strikingly similar so uh, cardigans, lad. It is so much so that if... If you walked into a store and saw them side by side on a rack, you might think, hey, those are very strikingly similar <laughs> cardigans. Now, the one thing I do notice is, look at this. This one has the stripes on the shoulder, it whereas... All the way through. This one has them right down the chest. and everything. This looks huh. like it is indeed... A different cardigan. A different cardigan. Hmm. In which case, Tordeaux, who who quite obviously appreciates zip-up beige cardigans with stripes yeah. <laughs> is eligible for 100 viewer points tonight. I am Let's interested see. to see how many he has in the same color. Though. Yeah. Aren't you curious? I think he's actually like... Put them all look. side by side. <laughs> That's astounding. Like, I, I picture, you know, like Mickey Mouse going into his closet and every outfit is exactly the same and, and Tordo has this closet full of cardigans and he has been waiting and waiting for an opportunity to, to, just show them off. to be able to show them off and to be <laughs> able to turn these into viewer points or something along those lines. So when we mm -hmm. offered 100 viewer points for he would be ready. cardigans, he, would he, he was not only ready, them. but he was pretty excited, yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> so much so that Tordo is looking, he's, he's really... Oh, gee. <laughs> I, I think you've got a fan. Tordo also sent a picture of a cake that he created <laughs> this week. Oh, dear. <laughs> Why does nobody make fantastic. me a cake? Fantastic. He says it tasted really good. I'm jealous. I didn't get cake this weekend. The uh, the <laughs> recipe was in. Well, you got a cake. It's just you. you I didn't. You know. Can't quite eat it. Can't Are you blushing? It. No. <laughs> you can't tell on camera, can you? <laughs> <laughs> so the cake was apparently delicious, but the uh, the recipe was in English, 
And so he, he worked his way through, and, uh, and I think he got uh, most stuff right. He, sa he says that up here at the top, it actually says we. Oh, yeah, okay, oh, W-E. W-E. We, and then a big heart, love, Krista. Isn't that sweet? Aw. <laughs> okay, so uh, how many points should we give him for a cake? Oh, I mean, that was a lot of work. That's astounding. That should be like double the cardigan. Double the like you'd like give him another hundred points. I think so. To to total two hundred points for Tordo. Yeah, for today. This week. Yeah. Wow. You're that's you're a gonna great learn cake. that you know, that was a pretty cool cake. That's really cool. Um, if you send us a picture uh, live at Category Five TV, just be creative. Uh, we've got Gadwill who uh, who says this shirt <laughs> has a caption on it. You can't really read it in the picture, but it says I overpay for Mac OS Ten instead of using Linux. Mm -hmm. And uh, and there's the shirt. Where did he get that picture? <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> okay, so what else have we Why got? Okay, so started? we, we got to give him some points for that, too. I don't know. How, how many points do you think that's worth there? Oh, we'll let I you decide, because it's, it's kind of your deal. Now, we had <laughs> talked about a, a, like a big big prize for, for shirts, but I really want to see someone like silkscreen a shirt. Or Just like, like really full like a shirt you that you can walk around town that you can actually <laughs> wear um, and and like videotape it and put it on YouTube that you're that you're wearing this shirt that you silk screened. Uh, we've also got Megan from Canada who says I love Category Five, <laughs> and there she is in her cardigan, perfectly eligible for a uh, uh, 100 points guaranteed. <laughs> what what's going on over there? I just love these pictures that people are sending in. They are pretty wild. Pretty wild. <laughs> I, I want a cake. I want somebody to make me a cake. They will definitely. Maybe get you'll points. get cupcakes. <clears throat> I'm just saying, then that's like multiple cakes. Yeah, that's, that's almost. That's, oh, that's, that's that is good. eligible, I think. Okay. Send in your pictures uh, to live at category5.tv. That's all the the uh, time that we have for pictures tonight. I know that there are some other pictures that were submitted this week and we will uh, we'll take a look at those on uh, next week's show and uh, and award points accordingly. Do we decide how many points we're going to give to Gadwill for the shirt? I don't know. It's an awesome Chat shirt. Room? Chat room, you let us know uh, how many points uh, we should give Gadwill for that shirt and uh, we'll average it out. Uh, unless somebody gives something like 10 million then we, uh, we won't take that into account <laughs> for the average. Gadwill? <laughs> Well, hey, welcome to the show. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun tonight. Already having fun. We've got 500, 100, uh, 50 points, 100. So, yeah, it looks like we're, uh, we're going to be in around that. Cool. All right, gang. Shall we uh, jump right into... Uh, our series? I believe we shall. We've got a lot to cover tonight. I want to mention uh, Perfect Buntu, number six is uh, currently in beta testing. Those of you who have been asking about it, uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about it if we have time tonight. Uh, but it is in beta testing, and it is going to be released on Monday. That's the software that's going to allow you to set up some really cool uh, add-ons for your Ubuntu 11.04, as well as uh, everything all the way back to Hardy. All right. Bring up your web browser, too. Oh, I should start, because, because we edit these things down. I'm learning. Welcome to part nine of the <laughs> web development series here at Category 5 Technology TV. That sounded rehearsed a little. Do you uh, practice scripted. before the show? Is that what you... I, I practiced that whole Multiple segment Multiple times, right there. which one sounds best. Yeah. That was pretty good. Thanks. <laughs> My name's Robbie Ferguson. And I'm Krista Wells. Cool. All right, so... <laughs> For you. <laughs> you know, it's, well, we're going to edit this down. Cat5.tv slash webdev, and that's the place where you're going to be able to uh, just watch this segment as is. Um, so, uh, yeah, we gotta, we got to be conscious of those viewers. It's also going to be available on a DVD set. We're already talking to somebody about printing it. So trying to get a, a printer in the uh, U.S. to do the printing for us so that we can, uh, we can ship it uh, as they're ordered. So... We will make that available for you. Cat5.tv slash webdev. And uh, when you're there, you'll see that we have a, uh, just an amazing deal to give you uh, for uh, web hosting. $70. That will give you a full year of website hosting. 
And uh, as well, we're going to throw in a, uh, a free domain name registration. And uh, that's your chance to, to get started with your new website. And uh, fantastic price, fantastic opportunity to get some hosting going. And you can renew it at the end of the year and keep going with it. And here's something cool. Somebody said to me, well, I, I love what you're doing with the web development series. But I, I'd really like to be able to build websites for customers and build websites for friends and, and host them. But how can I do that? Now, <clears throat> if you want the free domains and you want to have them in separate accounts, that's cool. You can go through and you can, you can use that coupon code as many times as you like. However, I'll just let you know that uh, what you can do within this coupon, you get your $70 one-year hosting, and you can actually host an, basically an unlimited number uh, of domains and, and websites within that hosting account. So you pay $70 for the year, and you can pay, uh, put, you know, if you have 100 websites, you can put them all in that account. Uh, but then you need to have a domain for each one. So, well, is that going to cost $100 or whatever? Uh, so we're going to give you access to the domains for, depending on what they are, anywhere from $9.99 US to $14.95 uh, US. Uh, and you'll be able to do that once you've registered. Uh, so you start with the $70, you get your one domain, and then if you want to add another domain, uh, it will simply cost you $10. And you can add that to your account, and that will just be added, and you can now wow. both of those domains will go to that account. So really, really opens you up to being able to do a lot. It's cat5.tv slash webdev. Great opportunity for you, especially if you're just starting up as a web developer or wanting to get uh, multiple websites up, or just one. Still a great deal. All right. So that said, uh, what we're going to do tonight is go to demo.cat5.tv slash 007. And there we are. That's where we left off last week. And you'll see that uh, we, we ran out of time. We were looking at the Z-index thing here. And, uh, and we didn't get a chance to, to determine why it was falling uh, behind. Now, let's see. I had uh, I like to give credit where credit's due. And I've got a, a viewer who commented uh, on the website. So I'm going to bring up our website. In the meantime, I'm going to show you how we can fix that straight off the get-go. Um, so I'm going to bring up my FTP application. And tonight I'm going to do things a little bit differently. In the past, I've been editing the files locally and then um, and then manually uploading them. Tonight I'm going to use um, the built-in editing features of uh, fi uh, FileZilla. So mm -hmm. check this out. What we're going to do is a little bit different tonight, but I want to show you uh, how this works. And if you have been following along up to this point, you know how to do it the other way as well. So I'm going to go into the 007 folder. And here are my files. And what I'm going to do here differently with FileZilla, which is available on uh, Windows, Linux, uh, whatever platform you want, I'm going to just right-click on the file and go View or Edit. And that's going to launch uh, in my default application for that, uh, for that, which is, in my case, gedit. So what's really, really cool about this is now, if I make a change to this file, whatever it be, right, and then save it, FileZilla is automatically going to say, here, you've made a change. Do you want to upload it? Yes. Done. Very, very cool. So that's what we're going to do tonight. Streamline it a little more. Yeah. Awesome. Super fast. <laughs> so we've got a lot to get through. All right. And that's usually how I actually work. I, I work the invert of what we have been doing. I, I'll edit it directly on the server using FileZilla and gedit. And then when I'm done, I download the site. But there's a disadvantage to that, too. In, in our case tonight, we're working on a development site. Nobody has the URL other than you. And it's not a client site. If this was a client site and it was live and you're making a, a changes on the fly, then you're probably best to try those changes locally, then upload them when they're done. Otherwise, you ris run the risk of uh, affecting a live site. So you don't want your customer or people who are viewing your site to see a work in progress. You want them to see the final product. So you work on it locally, then uh, upload it to probably a test server or something like that, and then upload it to the website when you're done. So, OK. So first of all, uh, OK, so I've got my index open. Now I'm going to open my style sheet same way. All right, so two ways that this can be done. One, OK, so you see our Z indexes are all correct. Real kind of lazy way is to take my z-index and say, OK, change that to a negative number. And that's going to make absolutely certain that that's going to fall behind. 
Okay. And uh, of course, according to W3 schools, and I'll post a link, uh, negative numbers in uh, a z-index value are perfectly uh, acceptable as far as com uh, standards compliance goes. Uh, but tonight, what I want to do instead, I want to do this, uh, I guess what you would say a more proper way, which is to fix the problem, and that is that I've got elements that are positioned relatively or absolutely uh, that are falling over top of uh, a floating element. So what I need to do is I need to take that floating element and I need to make it so that it's positioned relative. And uh, just, uh, just a greet out to T.S. Gurr, who was actually the first to, uh, to make that comment on the show notes for episode number 188. So let's do it. Uh, okay, so this method was to set it as a negative z-index, which won't always work because it does depend on other variables. But here's my Polaroid, which is the element that is floating right. See? Okay. So what we want to do is go position relative, which we're not going to get too high into at this point because there, there's a lot of stuff. Now you'll see that that, is gonna, that should work just the same way. It looks the same as setting the z-index differently. Uh, we're not going to get too heavily into relative positioning. Basically, uh, the difference between that and, say, absolute positioning is relative positioning is your element still holds the same area on the page, but you're able to then move it around. It's, it's, it almost takes it to uh, a different spot on the, on the, on the axis of, of uh, basically where you're editing it. And you'll learn a lot about that when you're, if you try moving something al uh, around using relative positioning. But we're not getting into that. But by setting it to relative positioning there, now we've fixed the problem that our absolute positioned div, which is going to become our menu, uh, was falling at the wrong z-index or the z-axis. So think of your website as having up, down, left, right, and back, and forward. So far away from you and close to you. The z-index allows you to use that z-axis. OK, so let's grab our mock-up that, uh, that we've got. You can, of course, download all of the files that are necessary for tonight's lesson at cat5.tv slash webdev. If you have questions for us, uh, you can post those to Krista in the chat room, category5.tv. You'll remember how we sample colors just to, uh, to find out um, what a color is to, to set the, the background color, for example. Um, really, really quick way. Now, I can go through. This is in the GIMP. Uh, I can find the, the blue bar really, really easily, okay? Um, so that's what I'll do is I'll actually select that layer, the blue bar, okay? I've got my Doppler tool, or they call it the color picker tool, and then I single click on the blue area. Remember, that's the highlighted layer. And what that does is it set my foreground color to the, uh, to the color of that, what is going to be our div. So I'm going to copy that, BED8FF. That's the hexadecimal color code for it. All right. Right now it's set to FFF. We're going to change that. You remember FFF is actually white. So now that I've changed that, refresh the page at 007. And you'll see that it's the blue that, uh, that Krista had used in the mock-up. You think that's funny, don't you? The it's just awesome. conveniently awesome, that's all. It's, it is, it's just we've infused that little extra awesomeness into the show tonight. Demo.cat5.tv slash 007. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Krista. Oh, man, <laughs> Okay, back at our mock-up. Here's what we want to do. We're going to grab that square marquee, rectangular select tool. I've got words that I make up for everything. <laughs> and I'm going to highlight. I'm going to show you, Krista, something that I love about the GIMP that I don't love about Photoshop. Oh, please don't hold back. No, well, I <laughs> we, we got to gotta know what's different and we got to see what's... All right. So we're going to create a, a marquee and I want it to be this thing. And oh, no, I've gone too high. Now with the GIMP, you can actually grab that and you can resize that marquee extremely simply. See that? So I don't have to try again. There's my marquee, and I can change it. So now what I want to do, do you like that? That's, that's pretty nifty. That's a cool feature, isn't it? <laughs> How 
how you could mock such an awesome feature. I'm just saying, you know Apple I mean? probably already has it under their belt. They're just waiting for They're like, like oh, maybe with CS6, <laughs> when you spend another $1,000, we'll throw that in for you. Exactly. It's just all marketing. I like, just I like come out a yep. little at a time, that's all. Yeah, all, all about just bringing out a little at a time. <laughs> or we can jump right to the, uh, the, the free program and get it all now. I'm so, I'm, I'm kidding and serious at, at the very same time. There's <laughs> a little bit of seriousness in every yeah. kidding. Yeah. I've copied that merged to my clipboard. When you copy something merged, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you a little trick here with, I'm gonna highlight a weird area here, okay? And I'm gonna go edit, copy. Now I'm gonna go edit, paste as, new image. And you'll see, well hey, that's not what I highlighted. Because all I did was I copied the currently selected layer. So with copy merged, instead, or uh, that's, the, that's the Photoshop term, copy merged. In the GIMP it's called copy visible. What it's actually doing is it's copying every, everything from every layer. Go new image, and you'll see that that's actually pasted the entire thing rather than just the existing layer. So that's the difference there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight a section of this blue guy because I want to get the height. And I'm going to edit, copy visible, edit, paste as new. And I don't have to do that. There are other ways. And I can even use the, uh, I, can, I can see the measurements, but I want this to transcend all the uh, different tools that are available. So this method will work on Photoshop, GIMP, whatever. I can just see that it's 89 pixels in the GIMP, or in Photoshop you can go image, image size, and you'll see that it's 89 pixels high. So that's what we want to set our submenu div to. Height is currently 30, and what did I say? 85? 89? See how short? 80, sure, 85. 85. <laughs> Thank you. I was listening, I swear. <laughs> I was listening to myself too, Krista. But anyways, that's that's good. There we go. All right. Happy with that? That's good. You're happy with that? Good. Fantastic. Excellent. We've only got a couple minutes left until the news, so let's uh, let's just kind of, I want to just rock this thing out. We're going to keep going. Right below my submenu, before I do that, I want to show you something interesting. Style.css, you'll notice submenu. First thing, position absolute from the top, 361 pixels. Search engine optimization says, whatever I put in here, let's just pretend that this was some really important search engine keywords. Keywords of goodness. Okay? So now, if that's my... Just, just say. Okay? My font just happens to be white, but the words are there. But watch this. Because I've got absolute positioning on this submenu item, remember that... Search engines, to the, for the most part, still read your file in order. So they read it from the top, going down. It kind of starts at body, and then it works its way down. Well, if this is the really key stuff, I don't want it to happen at the bottom of the file. I want it to happen near the top. So what if I were to put that there, for example? Upload that file. Refresh. It's still in the exact same spot because the positioning of that element is absolutely positioned. It's hard set to the 360 pixels or whatever it was from the top. Um, so that can be placed anywhere within your, um, within your HTML aspect of the site, keeping in mind that it is subject to whatever wrappers it's contained within. In this case, it's contained within simply wrapper, no matter where I place it. Similarly, if this was a, a bit of content, say, um, you know, something that you don't want to have priority, so to speak, in the search engines or over other content of your site, you can place it at the very bottom of the site. It's still going to appear visually uh, where you want it to be on the site, but it's not going to, um, it's not going to get, it's not going to be up as high in the source code. So just a little interesting fact for you. Um, so we're going to come back to that in uh, just a couple of minutes, uh, and in the meantime. We're going to toss things over to uh, Hillary, who has some interesting news stories for us, and uh, we will talk to you in, uh, in just a minute. Hillary, uh, nice to have you here. Hey everyone, it's time for the news from the category 5.tv newsroom. 
The internet, TV, and phone services provided by Westman Communications Group experienced a severe glitch on Sunday due to flooding in one of its fiber optic lines between Brandon and Winnipeg. Users in Brandon and the surrounding areas have spent more than two days without internet. The company was able to partially restore television service Monday, with many users missing the Canadian election coverage. A limited amount of email service began responding to users this morning, and websites hosted by Westman became available around the same time. But as of this morning, outside internet access was still not available. The issue is affecting users all the way from Dauphin to Killarney in the Canadian province of Manitoba, making this widespread outage about um, 300 kilometers, covering that big distance, which is like 185 miles. The company expects to have all services restored today, and users affected by the issue may receive updates on the progress of the repair, which will be shown on the community programming channel, WCG-TV. In a story which runs together with every other story about Google these days, the company is now being sued for $50 million by two HTC Inspire 4G owners in Michigan in a class action lawsuit regarding Android's ability to collect information on a user's GPS location. The suit comes a week after Google acknowledged that Android phones with active GPS devices store some location data directly on phones, but only for a short time. Google also stated at the time that any sharing of that location data requires the user's permission. You'll remember how we reported recently about the fact that your smartphone, your smartphone stores private location data in pictures. Well, now according to lawyer Stephen Buttigieg, in his complaint, Android's tracking capability puts users at serious risk of privacy invasions, including stalking. According to the Detroit News, the smartphone privacy suit is believed to be the first of its kind filed in the U.S. Sony executives promised users on Saturday that they would start restoring their cloud-based cloud PlayStation Network and the related curiosity services this week following what the company called an illegal and unauthorized intrusion last week which they now have confirmed has threatened roughly 101 million users worldwide. Sony, based in Tokyo, said that the breach may have affected the credit card information of approximately 10 million users. Services are finally starting to be restored region by region. There are some reports of service coming online in some parts of Japan, but this has not been officially confirmed by Sony. Sony plans to offer users welcome back rewards to apologize for the service interruption and has promised to step up security efforts to protect its users' personal information. So, when will service be back online in your area? Sony has yet to confirm an official date. Hmm. The last man to set foot on the moon wants to go back, only this time to mine a rare element used in the production of fusion energy, a waste-free form of nuclear energy that could help power the planet in the 21st century. Harrison Schmidt, the first geologist and the last of 12 men who left the bare footprints on the moon, is promoting an ambitious $15 billion U.S. project to obtain helium-3, an isotope of the inert element. While it is rare on Earth, helium-3 is relatively abundant on the moon. Schmidt says helium-3 is nearly ideal fuel for fusion nuclear power. It's ideal because it produces little or no radioactive waste unlike almost all other nuclear systems. Following his speech, Schmidt said his $15 billion project, which he outlined in his 2006 book, Return to Moon, could be implemented over 15 or 20 years. You can get these full stories online at our website, category5.tv slash newsroom. The category5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions from our wonderful community of viewers. If you have a story you think is worthy of honor or mention, send us an email at newsroom at category5.tv. For the category5.tv newsroom, I'm Hillary Rumble. You're welcome.
No problem. That's my job. I said, that's my job. That's what I'm here for. So hopefully, Whoa. quickly, there was a quick question in the chat room. Just Before we move on, I just realized, <laughs> hey, we come back from the news, we have some witty banter, and Robbie didn't turn on the microphones. That's okay. Oh. But the, I'll just tell you, the banter was hilarious. It was good. They just saw us laughing. And then they <laughs> they're like, like, what's going on? <laughs> it looks like they're having a good time, but we're kind of left out here. Especially the guy who was looking for the audio feed. It's like, That's good. it's just That's dead good. air. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Oh. <laughs> this episode of Category 5 Technology TV is brought to you in part by Pogoplug at cat5.tv slash pogoplug. And you can also join me in the massive multiplayer online game, uh, Planet Calypso, cat5.tv slash calypso to download that free program. Uh, and uh, I was thanking Hillary, and I mentioned that, uh, that <laughs> Krista was actually at this place with her laptop. I just jumped into the picture. Yeah. Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> so, now, now, would you like to jump into some questions? Deja vu. <laughs> so, <laughs> hopefully uh, a quick question. Um, Invisible, or Invincible Mutant um, just wants to know if you could quickly goodbye. help him out with installation of Sopcast Player. Sopcast Player? Yes. Not familiar with it. What is that one? And what, uh, what operating system are you on? That's the first question. Let's take a look. Peer-to-peer uh, peer peer internet TV. All right. Um, for Windows, for Windows, for Windows, for Windows. I'm just looking here. For Windows, Windows. For Linux. Command line version. GUI front end. Download. Uh, what I'll do, because I'm not familiar with this, uh, is I will uh, I'll take a look at it after the show, uh, just like a, a television program viewer for uh, for your computer, uh, and seems that there is a Linux version. So unless uh, you know, I'll grab this archive file real quick. Super small. Well, let's take a look. Build time. Blah blah blah. Okay. So let's extract this file. So this is the archive that I downloaded. sp-sc-auth. Is that the right file? Can't be. It's an auth file. Well, what I'll do... Command line version. Please read the readme if you have st. Yeah, I think it best... Uh, you have baffled him. Well, I mean, I can, I can run this this application that is here. I'm just extract I've just extracted it to my desktop, right? SP off. Whatever it is. You probably wanna check it out with uh, you know, whatever I'm not sure what it is. It's it's not a like a, an SH script or anything. So if you trust it, it's already set as ex executable. It doesn't run in the GUI, so we'll go into terminal. Applications, Accessories, Terminal, CD, and then to where you put it. Let's see if it does anything here. Error while loading shared libraries. Okay, so did it touch in the information here? If you don't have SDDC5 on your system, please download from sopcast.com and place it into user slash lib. So... I don't know how well you can follow me here. I'm going to go to sopcast.com, just like it says in the instructions there. See how visible that lib file is. I'm not sure where on their website the lib file is, my man. But uh, if you grab that lib file, the problem you're going to run into is that you have to be super user in order to write to the folder that they're telling you to write to. So without having the file, I'll show you how to move that file. 
just so that you're ready for it when it's time, okay? So let's say you've got this file, okay? I'm going to create a fake file just with that name just so that you can see. All right. So it's telling me to put that in user slash lib. Well, here's the problem. If I go to my desktop and I grab that file that I've now downloaded, we'll pretend, and I go to user slash lib, and if I try to paste, you know what's going to happen. It's just not going to give me that option because this is a super user only folder, which I don't have right access to. I cannot paste to that folder. So without using the GUI to do it, because it's a little safer to do it in terminal, go cd slash usr slash lib. Sorry for the flicker there, but uh, hopefully you can still follow along. Okay, so now I'm in that folder. Okay, I still can't write to it, but as the super user, I could. So I'm going to go ls home robbie desktop. That's where my file is. Okay, lib stdc plus plus. So I'm going to go sudo for super user do, cp for copy, home, Robbie, desktop with a capital D, lib, and then hit tab, and it's going to finish filling that in for you. Okay? And then destination. Let's see if I can get rid of some of that flicker there for you. Sorry about that. Okay. So, sudo cp slash home slash Robbie slash desktop, lib stdc, blah, 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 period. And that means put it where I am. Hit enter. It's going to ask me for my super user password. And now I have successfully placed that file in user lib, creating a copy. Lib stdc plus plus. There it is. Okay. So by using that command, you're going to be able to copy the files that you've downloaded that are necessary in order to do that, and keep that in mind when you're when you're following these directions. No, you'll need to sudo. CP. If you look at the instructions here, they're not taking into account that you're not an SU user, so your copy command would actually look like that. Okay. So actually follow these directions because they're doing this a little bit differently. Okay. But make sure you put sudo before it, and then that way you'll be able to copy it over. Let me know if that worked for you. Okay. I'm not familiar with the application, uh, but uh, let me know if that instruction is what you were looking for. Here's hoping. Cool. Want to try another one? Yeah, well, uh, maybe one quick question, and then uh, we'll get back into our uh, our series here. I, I'm sorry to, uh, I don't know how many questions are coming in the chat room and everything, but uh, we do our best to. And you can always email live at category5.tv, um, and that is a great way to get your question in so that we can get it on the show. Um, tonight, I really want to push out as much as we can in the web development series as well. Okay, so from Anthony Albers, and he's from Anthony. Holland. He says, hi, I've watched, your, I've watched all your programs and find them very interesting. I wonder, what is the best way to install Ubuntu? Use the entire disk or to partition the hard disk with a separate partition for the OS? Okay, well, that's going to be a case-by-case -case thing. Um, two things to look at. One, how big is your hard drive? Because if it's a smaller drive, you'll probably want to take the whole drive because you want as much space as possible for your applications and your files and things like that. Um, and also, are you going to be using, is there any reason to partition the drive in such a way that you've got space left for other stuff? If you plan to, uh, to dual boot down the road, for example, maybe you want to leave some space for Windows. If, on the other hand, you don't think you're going to do that, or if there's no reason to have a separate partition, then you might as well just take up the whole drive and you're good to go. Um, that said, you can you can use the part. Well, uh, uh, that uh, that would probably suffice, I think, for as far as that question goes. It, but it depends on on what you're what you're going to be doing. If you're dual booting, if you need extra space uh, set aside for another task uh, that's not Ubuntu, or if you want to have a separate. Uh, um, sometimes, for example, I'll just give you a, a shoot out an example. If you're dual booting, you've got Windows XP. Ubuntu, you might leave an empty FAT32 partition so that it's a partition that not only can Linux read and write to, but also because it's FAT32, or it could be NTFS, of course, um, you'd be able to write to it from your Windows partition as well. So it becomes, you know, that's a great place to put, say, your My Documents in Windows and My Documents in Linux because 
it becomes shared. So when you reboot into Windows, you've got access to the same documents as you have. So that's one reason you might partition it that way. But for the average user, I would say take up the whole drive if this is going to be your main operating system. Uh, and then that just gives you all the space of that drive. Excellent. There's a second part. Okay. Uh, what I want to upgrade with a fresh install was the best way not to lose my applications and settings I installed. Backup slash home folder. Uh, you may still, you'll probably need to still, um, if you're going to do a fresh install, you're still going to need to install the applications. But at least you won't have lost your, your settings then. So for example, I've got um, FileZilla. And within FileZilla, my FTP application, I've got some memorized um, web servers that I'm going to be able to uh, upload and download my files from. So if I back up my slash home folder, I'm, I'm adversely backing up my slash home slash Robbie slash dot FileZilla folder, which contains all the user settings for that application. So then with that backup, now I can wipe my computer. Uh, and you can back up more than that if you want, but, or if you need to, but then wipe your computer, install the new operating system, and then copy your home back over, and then install FileZilla, and load FileZilla for the first time on this new operating system, and suddenly all of your memorized um, websites are back in the application, as long as it's a compatible version, which is usually the case. Uh, so back up your slash home, and always keep a good backup, especially of your slash home. Uh, possibly a, an image of your drive if, uh, if you want to save some hassle if, uh, if you ever do have a crash. But uh, back up, back up, back up. <laughs> but slash home is where all that data is. Okay? You'll still need to install the applications, though. All right. What do you say? Let's, uh, Thanks for your questions, everybody. Let's continue on. All right. Okay, so jumping back to our, uh, our feature here on web development. Let's see. I'm going to close down some of the stuff that I opened up here while we were chatting it up. There we go. F5.tv slash W7. Oh, yeah, 007. That was like a Is blue steel good? 007. <laughs> that was pretty good. That was pretty good. All right. So we learned about how the Basically, the static positioning using absolute positioning makes it so that this div um, can be anywhere within our source. That's very cool. So it can be anything, any text in there, no problem. Now, well, throw some text in there. And where's that ending up? It's going to be, of course, because there's no float on this blue one, it's going to be directly. Oh, where is my upload? There we go, just finished. Refresh. OK, it's actually going up here because we have the absolute positioning granted, right? So when we create our div now, here's what's interesting. Because we have created a div that is absolutely positioned, this one here, OK? Now, my relative positioning, or the position of my next element, is actually going to fall above that because I've already bumped everything down just for that one for my submenu element. So what we need to do is when we create our next wrapper here. Now, OK, I'm, I'm still within the head, uh, the header. I want to get outside of the header. Let's call this main body, because this will be just where our text goes. All right, we can put lorem ipsum in there if we want. Lipsum.org. It's a great tool. We're going to throw a border on that so that we can see okay, with main body. And you'll notice I'm going to start to not explain everything because at this point I'm thinking, OK, you're following along and we know exactly kind of what is going on here. Okay, Keeping our everything nice and clean, semicolon at the end of the line. I want to see where this element is actually falling. Now it's possible my z-index is throwing that behind. So I'm just going to give it an absurd z-index just for the moment and just see if that's what's happening here. And in that case, we're still not seeing it. So let's 
Let's go. I'm going to create bigger border position relative. Let's see. We've got to find our element here. There it is there. Okay, so it is falling behind this particular element, the blue. We want to move that down. So with our relative positioning, we can now, from there, go top, and the height of the submenu is 85. So we're going to add that as our top positioning element here. I'm going to remove the border. Remove my z-index, because I don't think it's going to be necessary for us and add a color of white. Uh, pardon me, not color, because that's our text color. What I meant is background. And you'll notice that I'm not actually going background color. I'm going to use just background, which is going to establish the same thing, and it is uh, W3C compliant. Okay, so now that is positioned where we want it to be. Oh, no, our z-index is good. You can see that the shadow is actually happening above the white. So, height of this element. What we want to do is we're going to use a tool called min height, or a uh, statement, uh, and we'll set this to, say, 200 picks. And what that does in uh, the modern browser is it tells it that the minimum height of that element, it's not going to, it's not going to squeeze it to the text. Instead, when we refresh, it's actually going to have a minimum height of what we specify. So that is going to give it a nice little bit of padding here for shorter paragraphs. And then, of course, the longer paragraphs, because it's a minimum height, not a hard set height, it's going to grow uh, vertically. OK. So finally, we're at the point where we can start actually adding text to our website. Um, of course, this element here, the blue element, we can place the new menu uh, into that, our submenu. We've got a spot to put our text. And from there, we also, uh, I guess, that's that's really, uh, we're getting pretty close, eh? It's all coming together. It's really much. starting to, to look like, uh, is that what you had envisioned? That is what I had envisioned. Fantastic. <laughs> all right. So that's where we're at for tonight, 007. <laughs> this is Category 5 Technology TV. And you'll find us online, www.category5.tv. If you're truly enjoying the... Uh, the web development series, go over to cat5.tv slash webdev. And from there, you're going to uh, be able to find out all the different tools that, uh, that we use here on the show as we're demonstrating the web development series. Uh, and you're also going to have a chance to flatter us for the series or post your comments at the bottom of the page as well. Uh, and indeed, we have a comment here uh, from Scott who says, I'm really enjoying the current series on web development. Uh, this has explained many things to assist me uh, redesigning my own index page once I've got the time. And that's uh, exactly what this is all about. I hope that uh, will inspire you to, to really dig into your own code. Uh, it may even inspire you to, to try web development and, and see what you can do and be creative. And it's, it's such a fun thing, I think, to, uh, to be able to realize these kinds of things like a website and really get in and, and create something that is your own and not just, uh, not that there's anything wrong with like a WordPress blog or anything, but not just a WordPress blog or not just, you know, it's something that we're creating custom and it's something that is, is really your very own. Yeah. I think there's something really cool about that. Makes you kind of look at websites completely different too when you're surfing through and everything. Mm -hmm. Because we're building it from scratch, we can really put an emphasis wherever we want when it comes to search engine optimization, when it comes to the actual data structure and positioning elements within our, our site, uh, how we want it to be able to grow, and with it, we're going to have it so that it's a fluid height, which is already in place. So uh, you go ahead and, and paste, some, uh, paste some more text into that, uh, into that design, and you'll see that it's going to grow really, really well uh, as far as the vertical goes. Um, so you can download the files from tonight's show, cat5.tv slash webdev. And uh, it's nice to see you joining us in the chat room, category5.tv. When you're on our website, uh, category5.tv, you will see that, uh, that we have an option uh, with stars to vote for your favorite episodes at Category 5. And I'd encourage you to do that. As a registered viewer, you'll be able to actually uh, click on the stars and... and 
choose your favorite episodes and one day we're going to actually use those uh, once there are enough episodes with different votings uh, that we'll be able to compile a list of people's favorites for example and, and do things like that and we'd like to know uh, what you think about the episodes as well so category5.tv and I'd love to have you uh, participate that week after uh, in that week after week cool cool yeah time flies doesn't it that's what they say hope everybody had fun tonight they is just the the ominous group of people that uh, that make all the decisions for us mm. Mm. good good yeah I'm watching the chat room here this is my chance to look at the chat room Catch up. yeah it's been busy in there isn't it hey everybody wow we do post <laughs> the chat logs well it's like <laughs> I don't know if you can see this or not but okay uh, this is okay do this is just since the beginning of the show right so we post the chat logs in the uh, in the show notes for episode number 189. So if you want to read what was said in the chat room, interesting thing about the chat logs is that you can actually follow along by minute because the show starts at 7 p.m. Um, so when you get 15 minutes into the show, you know that when it says 7:15 in the chat logs, that's exactly what you're in the conversation. You can follow along that way as you watch. So it's uh, pretty cool and nice to see everybody. Do we have any new viewers who are joining us in the chat room, uh, possibly for the first time tonight, or uh, maybe you're, you're fairly new here and we've never said hello? Uh, we'd love to say hello to you. Uh, let us know where you're from as well. Kevo wonders why um, Firefox takes so long to load compared to Chrome, regardless of which operating system you're using. And, and typically that has to do with the, uh, the add-ons that you're using in the, in the browser. Sometimes also, uh, Firefox does check for uh, updates when it first launches, and sometimes that can slow things down and be changed or disabled. It is nice to have that, um, that feature because you get the, the latest updates to, uh, to the browser. But definitely uh, the add-ons can cause some problems because you've you got to imagine that they've got uh, a very streamlined, fast browser, especially with uh, version 4. But you've got hundreds possibly thousands of developers who are creating their own third-party add-ons and you're possibly installing these into your browser so um, there isn't a lot of control as far as well what if one of those add-ons takes 30 seconds to load well your browsers <laughs> waiting 30 seconds to load which is unimaginable it's never that bad I hope but uh, uh, so Mozilla has uh, been putting an effort into actually adding to the add-ons a rating system so that they can actually show users how much bloat this is going to add to your Firefox installation and it's uh, it's been a bit of an uproar because popular add-ons have been saying well <laughs> you know I've, I've got a very popular add-on and now nobody wants it because they found out that it adds three seconds to their load time um, and uh, so that's that's something to consider um, but if you want to add add-ons you want to know whether or not it it's going to slow down your browser for sure Cool. What do you think? Awesome. Any other questions in the chat room? Did anyone say, hey, I'm new here? Uh, we do have a guest uh, in here. I think he's new. Hey, yeah. 7967. Yes. Nice to see you. Who else? Uh, I'll, I'll look back over the chat logs, but we'd love to hear from you about uh, what you're saying about audio. Obviously, we don't hear what uh, what you hear, and uh, we talked about it last week. Where, um, due to the power surges, we are having to use a. I'm using a different microphone, um, so and that's that's kind of a necessary thing for the moment. But we're we're hoping to, uh, with your help, we're going to be working towards replacing uh, damaged hardware. So well, you sound good from here, anyways. Fantastic sounds, sounds from like your point like of view. Like right here. Yeah, like, like in right stereo, bouncing off that wall right there. <laughs> Mm. Agamotto, uh, uh, guest 7967, Led Zepp, Jot, uh, we've got Invincible Mutant and Kevo, Cooler Bean, <laughs> cool name, Nua and uh, Pyrus Rock on their mobile, uh, MMD Murphy, JVSCC, these are just a few of the people who are joining us in the chat room and I just want to say greets to you and everybody else who's there. Corey Claxton just left us, and uh, we've got a whole bunch of other people joining us in the chat room, and I'd encourage you to get in on that. 
and uh, people, if you want to stick around after the show, we'll, uh, we'll be happy to say, uh, to be able to sit down and chat with you uh, in the chat room for a little bit. Thanks for watching Category 5 Technology TV, and we will talk to you uh, next Tuesday night. Thanks for being here, Krista. Great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, always a pleasure. <laughs> and uh, thank you for being here, and uh, we look forward to talking to you uh, one week from tonight. So we'll see you. Yeah.